with the number 20 Home Depot Husky Toyota. Uh, Matt, you won this race in 2004, and you have seven straight top tens in the Sprint All-Star race. So uh, let's do this. That's just because there's not very many cars in it. <laughs> So we have seven straight top tens. So <laughs> how do you feel about your outlook heading into this weekend? Well, I mean, uh, you know, everybody, I think, looks forward to the All-Star Race for for a variety of reasons. I mean, it's always an honor to be in it because it means you had a good season last year. Um, I, I always enjoy running it because we don't get any night practice for the 600, and I, I always feel like the 600 is one of the biggest races of the year. So you kind of get an idea when All Star Race gets over, you know what the track will more than likely be like when the race is getting over at the 600. So I always think that's important to, you know, get a feel for that and uh, you know get an idea where the, the track and the car and the tires are going to go, um, things like that. And um, you know, it's a, it's a short race. Um, just race hard for whatever format is every every lap, and uh, you know, see how it turns out. All right, we'll open up for some questions. You guys raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Just state your name and affiliation. We'll start right back there with Jeff. Again, the this race is not a points-paying race, as you know, but can you see this as a jump start to wins coming up in the season? Is this kind of how you look at this? Well, I mean, I, I've never been in a race I didn't want to win. So, I mean, you go out every week, um, you know, kind of with the same goals to try to win. It's just a, a different format. It's a shorter race. Uh, you know when the cautions are, are coming, or at least the scheduled ones. So you set up your car a little bit different, and, and you race a little different than you'd race, you know, for a you know four-and-a-half or five-hour race like, like you have next weekend. But and get a win. Um, you know, maybe in a way you feel a little bit better about, you know, the rest of the season, but it's still just, just one night and you still got to perform each and every week and you still got to, you know, actually get that win. I mean, winning a, a qualifying race at Daytona this year was great, but it didn't it didn't give us credit for a win and we didn't win the 500. So, I mean, you never know what's going to happen every weekend, every every event, every race, uh, you know, is a little different and has its own challenges. Uh, Bob Pockers, having him back as your teammate. <laughs> um Man, that's not really my department. I don't know. I haven't really put any thought on that. I've been more more thinking about trying to get uh, figure out how we can get back to victory lane and uh, like my other teammates, you know, so we're we're qualified for the chase or, or have a better chance of being qualified for the chase and just uh, get back to form, you know, running like we were last year. So I've uh, I try to stay pretty hard away from all the all the rumors. I'll go to Jeff. Jeff Clark from USA Today. Uh, Jimmy Johnson hasn't won all year, and he hasn't even won since like last October, which Man, is a long drought for him. That's terrible. Is he <laughs> is he suddenly in the ranks of, of the normal, or should anybody not be worried about him? Hey, he's probably washed up. I think he's done. <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's it, you know, it's hard to win races. I mean, everything has to go right. Um, you know, and, until you you get the win, and you bust through and win some races. You know, you always have that that little feeling in your stomach, like, man, we need to win. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm more worried about us winning right now than him. Um, I, I don't think anybody has much to worry about about him not being the guy to beat when it gets down to it at the end of the year again, like they usually are every year. So, um, you know, like I say, it's hard it's hard to win races. You got to get things lined up. Um, everything's got to go right, you know. Besides just having a fast car, so um, obviously they have they have one of the better cars each and every week. So I'm I'm pretty confident they'll probably. Win some races. David Caravella, NASCAR.com. Matt, we all know the history of this event, and you know the pass in the grass, and Davy and Kyle, and all that kind of stuff, and. You know, there's so much made of the no holes barred, seemingly nature of this, and racing for a million bucks. Do you really race this any differently than you would any other event? Well, not not really. Um, 
you know, a little bit, but not when it comes down to the end and, and to the win. I mean, in every segment, you know, you you know, if it's in the 600 and there's three hours to go and there's somebody that's faster than you, you're going to give them some room and probably let them go on his way and get racing them back where in this race everybody races each other, you know, as hard as they can for every spot the whole race. So so that's a little different. But when you get down to the end or, or like our, our typical races, you know, when you get down and get ready for that last pit stop, you never give anybody a spot. Usually everybody's racing, you know, even if you're holding somebody up real bad. So, I mean, that part might change a little bit. But other than that, it's uh, it's about the same. I mean, it's just, um, you know, a lot of times the leader gets out there on that short 10 lap, and it's just hard for anybody to get to him. I mean, it's just a kind of kind of this this type of racing. Um, you know, I think uh, I think there's other tracks where it wouldn't be that way. You know, if you get to some shorter tracks and, uh, um, you know, watch the last Richmond race or, um, you know, even, even Bristol is different speed as the lanes are now. Martinsville, some of those tracks, I think, certainly you would have a lot more potential for contact and conflicts and um, conflicts after the races, those, those type of things. You know, at a, at a track where you're doing 190 or 200 and aerodynamics and everything going on, um, you know, it's a little less likely for that type of thing to happen. Yep. Hello, Tom. Hey, Matt. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. <clears throat> do you see anybody as a clear favorite in the race for Saturday night, and what do you think is going to determine it at the end? Uh, I could probably answer that better after practice, you know, kind of see see how everybody's running. It's kind of hard right now. Uh, we all did that test in December, but, you know, without any testing, you know, an hour and a half of practice, and nobody's been on the track yet, it's hard for me to pick out to pick out a favorite besides the, the obvious guys that you could pick out, you know, before practice. But I think uh, the guys who've been running good at all the mile and a half this year, you know, are probably the probably the ones to look at. In the back, uh, Aaron Barnes, National Speed Sport News. Matt, you got your uh, your first points win here at Charlotte in 2000. Can you talk a little bit about what that meant to you, and has that kind of made Charlotte one of your favorite tracks? Yeah, I mean, I, I made my first nationwide start here as well. So I mean, I probably have more, like most of us, have more miles and laps here than probably any other track on the circuit. Um, you know, so it, it, I've always really enjoyed it, especially before the levigation and then the repave. You know, it always had a lot of character. It was real slick, a lot of bumps. Um, so and it's getting back to starting to be like that again right now. But I've always really enjoyed the track. It's a it's a it's a fun track. We've had some some good races here. Um, had some bad ones as well, but it's um, it's uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. I like it. We'll go to Viv, Alan, and then Dustin. Viv Bernstein, New York Times. Has Joey Logano moved into that short list of top contenders this year? Top contenders for the championship. Well, I mean, obviously he's really really competitive. It's um, pretty tough for me to sit here in May and pick out. A contender for you know who's going to be the contenders in September, and October, and November. Um, you know, but certainly I think um, since the whole shuffle happened, I think all three of us are kind of affected. Have all have all ran better, you know, and you don't see that happen very often. So, um, you know, I'm really happy for Joey. He's had a lot of success. I'm I'm sure it was hard going through what he did for those couple of years and wondering whether he's going to be there or not be there. And um, he certainly handled it. Um, like 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 he's much older than what he is handled it better than I think almost anybody in the garage could have handled it and went over there and has been winning races and, and running better than he's ever run so I've been I've been real happy to see that happy for him and um, certainly I think he's he's been a contender you know more weeks than than not for sure uh, Alan Kavan on NASCAR.com uh, Matt you had a great year last year first year with Gibbs Kevin's off to a good start after moving over to SHR what is it about a driver moving to a different team that kind of invigorate something or, or change their direction yeah I mean I don't think it's as simple as just moving to another team I mean there's a lot of a lot of moving parts there and, and a lot of factors um, you know certain certainly for me I, I felt good about it I felt like it was a, the right thing at the right time the right place um, you know the right crew chief um, you know just everything everything was right um, you know and I think Kevin you know, is in that same spot. I mean, Rodney's a you know really talented crew chief. Um, he's got good equipment over there. I mean, everything seems to be clicking for him really good. I know that they've had some mechanical issues and such, but they've been uh, you know one of the fastest cars every single week they've been to the racetrack. So um, that's uh, that's fun while it lasts for sure. That's you want to keep that going as long as you can for sure. But like I said, I don't think it's as, as simple as just switching teams. But I think um, certainly 
when you do do that, you've you know he was in a situation very similar to mine, really, uh, where we've both been in the same organization our whole career and and um, for a long time. And I think when you make that switch, it's not it's not like you try harder or you're more excited or anything like that. But certainly it's different, and you're you're putting in more time, learning everybody, learning the system, um, you know. So um, you know it probably. I don't know if you're more excited, but it's certainly it's certainly different, you know, and um, and and you're putting a lot of work into it because you are trying to get used to used to that system and get to know everybody and that type of thing. So it's exciting. Dustin Lee and then John. Dustin Long, MRN.com. Matt, uh, since 2009, you've had at least a victory at this point every season, but one. Um, how challenging is it? in the sense of not getting impatient at this point? I mean, obviously, there's still a long way to go, but how do you not get impatient because you've been used to getting that win and understanding that um, I think typically when things aren't going well, it's not like they, they change overnight. It's, it's a process. How, how do you avoid being impatient? How does your team avoid? Because there's a level of history of expectation, hey, 10 races in, I've, we've got to win. Yeah, I mean, you know, a couple of things. I don't, I don't think things are going bad. I think we need to be running, you know, a little bit better. But um, last week was a struggle. But before that, I felt like we were making some progress on it. We were certainly not where we were last year, you know, leading all the laps and um, kind of running like the four cars running right now. Um, you know, but for some reason, it seems like most of my wins have come early in the season for some reason, although last year they were spread out pretty good. So you know, I don't, I don't know. You can't, you can't force it. You do the best you can every week, and and um, you know, try to get the best result you can get every week. And you know, you hope that's good enough to get a win. And um, if it's not, you finish as high as you can and and move on to the next week. So it's something you can't really force. I mean, I think um, when you start thinking about it too much and worry about it too much and changing what you're doing, that's usually when you have more troubles. Also, uh, just quickly, you saw Mark Martin in the garage. And actually saw him with a breakfast sandwich, a high calorie breakfast sandwich. Have you ever seen ever seen him eat and, and a hot dog? Have you ever seen him eat anything bad? And and what's it like to see him back at the track? I haven't seen him yet. Um, he was probably just trying to get some press. <laughs> I don't know, or he just got done working out for like six hours straight or something. I don't know. Or maybe he was bringing it to a friend. Was he actually eating it? Oh. I don't want to tell you on that one. Wait. Hey, SpencerMotorsport.com. You've had five, you, you've been in, in race shops where there have been five drivers, four drivers, and now three drivers. Does Joe Gibbs Racing have the structure to support a fourth team? Do you feel that, you know, that would complement the existing three drivers or, um, you know, just would it pull what you guys have already too thin? Uh, I'm the wrong guy to ask almost all of those questions. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can't, I can't really speak to the, you know. First of all, I didn't, I didn't know they were doing a fourth team, um, and you know, I don't know whether they're ready for that or not. I think that they were one of the last ones to go to three. Um, you know, I, I've been on both sides of it. Certainly, I think if you get uh, the right people in place and a cohesive group and stuff, and you know, I'm sure there's advantages to it as far as the business and advantages or disadvantages. I don't, I don't really know because I don't, I don't really run the business, you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I've, you know, at um, at Roush for a while after the the um, Gillette cars moved over and all that stuff. I mean, we had eight for a long time, and I can tell you for sure that that's too many to be competitive. <laughs> eight is definitely too many. Um, I don't know where it gets to be too much or not enough, but I think there's different theories on it. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, Hendrick, uh, all their cars run really good, and the Stuart Haas stuff's aligned pretty closely, and all of them are running really good right now as well. Has, has it gotten to the point where people are kind of getting around the rules of you know, that four-car situation, whether it's Hendrick that they are going to You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I think when they made the rule to four cars, uh, the environment, uh, you know, for the car owners and sponsors and the garage and stuff was much different than it is today. So I, I don't really feel like feel like 
I wouldn't think NASCAR is quite as concerned about it today as they were as they were then. But um, yeah, certainly there's only I don't know four or five owners that pretty much control the whole sport. You know, whether it's engines, cars, technology, whatever whatever it may be. So is that good or bad? I don't know. John. It, I'm at John Houseler NASCAR Productions. Uh, as a driver, how is this track different, or how does it compare to other mile and a half tracks that you had to throughout the season? Yeah, I mean this track has always been very uh, sensitive to the sun, um, you know, and, and the weather when it cools down as far as grip level. Um, it's a really narrow track for a mile and a half, um, you know, and the, and the surface has always been pretty good. It's never been very abrasive for whatever reason. It gets slick, but it's not really abrasive. So it's it's definitely different. You know, I know everybody loops them together because they're about the same speed and aerodynamics and all that kind of stuff. But but really, all the tracks are pretty unique, and um, you know, there's there's not really another one that's uh, exactly like this. Mike. Matt, Mike Solar, it's Time Warner Cable News here in Camera Row. Uh, Apologize if you addressed uh, this before I got him in. talking at first. So. Nothing. Go ahead. I apologize if you addressed this earlier, but uh, you you talked about the final ten laps here in this All Star race, and then alluded to you might not have these problems if they raced at a shorter track. Would you be in favor of moving the All Star race to a Bristol or Richmond or, or some other place to improve the racing? Or would you be more inclined to keep it here so you get a chance to stay home for two straight weeks? <laughs> um, here's what my idea for the All-Star race has always been. This might not be popular, but I, I thought it was a couple of years ago. I think the All-Star race should move every year, and I think it should go to a track that we don't currently race at but is equipped to have a NASCAR race. So I think it should go to Iowa and Milwaukee and St. Louis and Pikes Peak and maybe even Memphis you, know, you got enough grandstands, but I think it should move around and go to tracks like that. I think that would be great for uh, all those markets that don't have a NASCAR race. I think you'd sell them out, whether that's thirty or 40,000 people, whatever that is. Um, I think the race would be good. It's not a points race, so um, I think that would expose a lot, of, a lot of fans to our product live that don't get to see it now. I think it would be fun. We'll go to Ryan and then Lewis. Oh, Ryan, well, see, nobody liked that idea. You shouldn't ask that question. Ryan McGee, ESPN. We talk a lot with the All-Star Race about you know, all the money and letting it hang out there and all that stuff, but how far is a driver or are you willing to actually go to win the race? Is it really no holds barred like we all say? You know, I, I think it's about the same as every other week. I mean, I, I think if you have a chance to win that race and you're right down there to the end, you're going to do everything you can to try to win that race. I mean, if you, uh, um, you know, but... If you wreck, you're not going to win. So, I mean, I think you do whatever you can to, to try to win. Um, I think like we do every weekend. It's just uh, just every week has different circumstances. You know, some of the races, you know, end real close and some don't. That's just the way the way racing is. Somebody might have a dominant car and get away no matter what track we're at. And um, other tracks like, um, like, like Richmond, we had the last restart and I didn't have the best car. And I was holding on as much as I could to try to stay in front of everybody for the win. And, guys behind you are trying to move you out of the way and do everything they can to win. So I, I don't think it really really changes that much every week. I think everybody's going for it. Uh, Lewis Frank Reuters, to your left, to your right, up front. There we go. That's my left, just yes. so you know. Your other left. All right. Your other, thank you. Um, this race runs in segments, you know, unlike typical races. So do you war game of this over the week or you let Jason do all the hard work? Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but basically I let him do all the hard work, just like always. I just drive. I got the good job. Steve? Uh, Steve Richards with PRN. Uh, you won this race 10 years ago. It's, I would think it's kind of like found money because you didn't know you were going to win it. You know, it's not kind of counted in. What did you do with the money? Do you remember? You never know you're going to win any race. Well, that's true, but you do get paid. Yeah. So what I did you do? I don't know. You don't remember what you did with your winnings? Mm-hmm. Socked it away? Probably some of it. <laughs> Didn't know if there's anything specific. No, there wasn't. Okay. 